Look, I don't know how many of y'all say y'all believe in God or mix God with other stuff, but I was in a conversation earlier today, right? And I was talking to a couple women. And usually I find this with women more so than men. Women generally get into that Mother Earth, that general uh, chakra, energy, witch shit, really, at, at the core of it. Sorcery, witch stuff, with they, they in line with a whole bunch of other things. That's cool. That's your culture, right? That's not of God. And that's fine. My only issue with stuff like that is trying to amalgamate it with God. If you're into witchcraft, witchery, sorcery, and all of that, then say that. Don't try to mix that with God. You're being disingenuous with that, right? It's kind of like saying the universe, this, that, and the third. God is not the universe. God created the universe, right? So we got to get that straight. You can't amalgamate that, mix it in, spin it. No, that's not what's happening here, right? The universe, they say universal law. The universe has no law. You know, I'm a part of the universe. You're a part of the universe. Whatever you choose to do is your law. Whatever anybody chooses to do in the universe is their law. Is it right? Is it order? No, it's not. That That's not universal law. That's chaos, right? Universal law is what the scriptures are. This is what the Bible is. It's a universal law. Let me show you how quick it works. Thou shall not murder. Do that work for somebody in America? Do it work for somebody in China? Somebody in Jamaica? Thou shall not murder good? Thou shall not steal. Is that good for Jamaicans? Is that good for Chinese people? How about in Australia? Don't cover your neighbor's wife? How do you think they feel about that in Jerusalem right now? You understand? This is universal. All that other stuff is a bunch of fancy things that people say because they don't know how to decipher the truth. The Torah is wisdom, right? But people are so afraid, you know, of actually studying something to find it. Let me give you perspective on Torah. When you guys get a judgment against you, seven years is bad credit. Y'all know that's from the scriptures, right? The Jubilee is the remission of debt, right? Every seven years we do that. That's from the scriptures. But you ignorant Negroes ain't know that because you believe in religion. Now, see, I'm talking about the laws of God versus what Jesus is talking about. That's something completely different. The laws of God, um, this is what Moses wrote down. That's still supposed to be in effect. In effect. Now, it's called the Ark, Ark of Covenant. Um, that's what the universal laws are. We had universal laws, right, which was the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments in the Scriptures. Then we had laws that went with the culture as far as Hebrew people. No idols, things like that. No dealing with blood, things like that. No tying up a bull and a goat to the same uh, cart to pull or, or do gardening work with or out in the farm to field. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the Levitical priesthood had laws to not wear woolen, wool and linen so they wouldn't sweat, you know? Things like that. That's all these scriptures are. But you caught religion somewhere. Like, y'all went into actual religion and not even the laws of God because that's all he gave us was laws to do's and what not to do that's pretty much it so it's actually laws in the scriptures so you can't do this you can't do that you can't do that unlike the universe where whatever i say pretty much go it does so who are you to tell me like i'm one person and you're one person i have 10 fingers 10 toes so do you so how do we decide that if i want to reap somebody that the reap is right you know better than I am. Or or murder. Because that's, that's my my truth is I like to murder people. Or I like to rape people. Where do we find a, a moral code to say that don't happen? Obviously, morality is not one of the things of man. Because all of us got some fucked up shit that we okay with doing. You might not be okay with me doing it to you, but inside of me... Why would I think it if it wasn't part of what I was okay with doing to somebody? In comes God. Those things that you would do, this is where he checks you on his impartialness. It's not better for you. It's not better for me. It's better for us. Don't kill. That's better for us. Don't steal. That's better for us. Don't cover his wife. That's better for us. His ass, his ox, manservant. It's better for us. 
have no other gods before him. Now, this is the part that gets people in trouble. And it's crazy. Because you don't mind saying karma. You don't mind saying universe. You don't mind saying energy. But you won't say God. What's, what's the difference? You don't see it. What he says is don't bow down to any graven images or have any other gods before me. Now, if you was going to live the perfect life, peace, and have all of that, is that too much to ask? You dig it? But this is why we stay stuck as a people because the most educated, Negroes, blacks, all these guys, they can't figure out this math. And it's simple. It's submission. That's what God was talking about from the beginning. Not submitting to me because I don't know what's best for you. I like to murder. I like to rape. You want to hear what Malachi 3 and 5 say about sorcerers? Yeah, uh, this is Wiz right now. Yeah, about sorcery, hey, speaking upon. Yeah, this is Malachi 3 and 5. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against the false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling and his wages, the widow and the fatherless. And turn aside the strange from his right. So bottom line, like y'all sorcerers on the menu, y'all yeah. gonna be the first ones up. And this is this is God dedicating who who's he's he's against. And um, another thing with the law, God. Let me explain to y'all about charity. Right, it's written into our constitution. You know, it's written that our tithes the people that has inheritance of the land of twelve tribes. Ten percent of our yield, our first. If I got a hundred cattle. I got to give 10 to the Levitical priesthood. Everybody in the land does. You know why that is? So we don't be harmless. I'm mean, excuse me, homeless. You know, no, it's shelter, right? We giving that to the Levitical priesthood because they are the holiest of the holy. God charged them differently than he charged us. If you read the book, you understand that. Even with like the sacrifices, only they can touch those instruments. So that's atonement. That's different from forgiveness. Us as a people, we get forgiveness from God. The Levitical priesthood, they make atonement for the sin, for a nation, not just one person. This is what they were. The Levitical priesthood made the atonement for the nation, not just singular people. That's the new covenant. The old covenant was between God, Abraham, and the nation. The new covenant is us singularly. So there's no priest to give that atonement annually. You dig it? This is in Leviticus 16 and 18, 16, 15, 17, and 18. It's, it's talking about the Levitical priesthood as they made the sin sacrifice, right? Blood. They the only ones could deal with the instrument for blood. But this is of God too. So people that don't read the book would notice. They automatically say, Oh, the book is corrupted. And I would like to believe them. But I actually know where it's corrupted at. I know it's corrupted because I've read it. I don't know it's corrupted because he told me it's corrupted or somebody said that. And this is where we live at as black people. We believe all the Jesus doctrine. Read it. Read the scriptures. I challenge anybody to read the New Testament. Well, first, 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 first and foremost, please. Um, the only way you get understanding from God is you submit yourself to him. And by submitting yourself to him, that's doing his will and not yours. And his will is that we keep the laws. Once you start keeping these laws, it's a little easier to understand without as much struggle. Um, Psalms 111 and 10 say, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have those that do his commandments. So you need to know what his commandments are before you say nobody can keep them, right? And before you people start with that, nobody can keep his laws. Let's see what the Lord himself said about us um, keeping his laws. I'm going to go, what is it? Was Deuteronomy 30, 30 and 11. This is God pertaining to his laws, like how, how we can do it. For these commandments, which I command thee this day, is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldst say, it, who shall go up to heaven and bring it to us that we may hear it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it to us that we may hear it? But the word is very near unto thee, in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou may do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, and death and evil. And this come and keep in his word. This from God right there, right? This is the beginning. You know, this is Deuteronomy. This is Moses. Y'all got to remember, it's just not words. It's a 
chronological timeline. These things are happening as Israel, the people that say they believe in God, our progenitors, forefathers, starting to go into this land and develop this covenant with the Most High. That's what we're talking about, Levitical priesthood. And this for people that really know the Lord. You should know this stuff. You, you understand? It's like coach class. God's not going to make you do this. He's not going to force you to do it. But it's going to be a time where it's going to be a test for this. Y'all like talking about the mark of the beast, uh, the end of times. Well, the end of the time, end of times is not the end of the world. You won't end God's world, but a time in that world is coming to an end. This period that we have right now is coming to an end. And God and his promises, y'all can take this how you want to take it. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's God, God and his promises. He says he'll send a prophet with his words in their mouth at certain times. So when you hear in a man that say he's a man of God and he's not talking what God is talking, he's not telling you basically God's commandments. He might not be a man of God like this is. Deuteronomy 18 and 18. I will raise up them a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. You know what God commands you, you know, and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken until my words, which he shall speak in my name. I will require, excuse me. I will, I will require it of him. He's saying he's holding you. He's holding you to this shit. If you didn't listen, you're going to be punished for it. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. So you hear God talking about prophecy, the prophet speaking this that he didn't command. Now, Jesus, the Christ, uh, which prophet spoke of him? And don't try to make something up to make it fit. God called names out, which which prophet spoke of Christ? Read it. Find it in the scriptures. See if you can pull it up. It's not in there. I looked. I, I read all the time. And I even tried to make the the bullshit uh, conjecture, the hearsay. I tried to make shit fit, right? I tried to reach to make certain things that don't come out because God's not that way. You don't really have to reach for God. Everything he said is spot on. His prophets were always right about stuff. You know Daniel, 70 years. Then King Cyrus, we were out of there, right? Isaiah. Isaiah is tricky for most people that don't read the scriptures because you just take the Christian application that they was talking about a virgin and they were, the virgin didn't mean what you think it mean or what I, in 20th century English. It was just talking about a young lady. That's it. And she was already with child, if you read it in the Tanakh or the, the Hebrew scripts. Because the Bible that you know, that we have pretty much in, in the free world, was translated from Hebrew to Greek to Latin and then to English. You know how much is missing in that? Tenses are changed, like presence, the past, words are changed. I came up with, let me show you guys something. To show you how the, the Bible was compromised, right? This is, um, I don't know if y'all can see this. I'm going to try to hold it up. It's Emmanuel. This is in, what is it? Isaiah 7 and 14. When Isaiah is talking about giving him a sign of a virgin, saying that a young a young woman is with child and she's about, she's about to have a baby. Call this baby name Emmanuel. This is a sign to say God is with you. So it's in that tense. He's talking to King Ahaz. But with this Jesus doctrine, they're trying to use that virgin for 700 years later. Ahaz was dead. It couldn't be assigned to him. You know, simple stuff like this. So let me show you a simple flip. I'm going to read with Emmanuel what it means by the um, strong accordance, because every word in the Bible is numbered. The strong accordance with a meaning on it and the context. It'll be different meanings. But in the context that you read, you should be able to get it. So here's what Emmanuel means. God, God, like lowercase. 
We all are gods. Ye all are gods. Psalms 82 and 6, but will die like men. God, God like one, mighty one, a mighty, mighty men, men of rank, mighty heroes, angels, God, false gods, demons, imagination, God, the one true God, many things in nature, strength, power. That's what it says here in the Hebrew for Emmanuel. And it's even spelled different. I don't know if y'all can see it or not, but look at the bottom. Spell Emmanuel with an I, the Hebrew up top. This is how you study the scripts. See what it says? All right, now New Testament. Because they're referencing, uh, this is Matthew 1 and 23. You know it's talking about Emmanuel. Now, at the top, you'll see it's in the Greek, and you'll see what the definition of the Greek is. This is Emmanuel, and it's spelled with an E. It's going to reference Isaiah 7 and 14 to say this is who they talking about. Oh, yeah, because of the virgin. See, this is Christian doctrine. 714 has nothing to do with this because this is 7... 700 years later, this virgin birth has absolutely nothing to do. Or Ahaz, the person that Isaiah is promising this sign, he has to see this virgin birth. It's that simple. But you can't take it, right? Because you need a Jesus to believe in. There's no reason for Jesus. Throughout our scriptures, throughout the history of God dealing with us, it was us dealing with God. And your enemies know this. You know, um... Even though it might seem like it's admirable or honorable to follow Jesus because it seems like he's keeping the laws of God. He is not per the laws of God. Anybody that says that God is not God. He said, like, the only way through the Father is through me. John 14 and 6. That's what got him killed. The scriptures we have, we have, we have detailed instructions what to do in the house of Israel if they're rise a false prophet and he starts working miracles and wonders if his message changes even though he's doing these miracles you're supposed to get with him kill him um is it deuteronomy what is it 13 deuteronomy 13 i believe please read deuteronomy deuteronomy 13 this is the constitution of israel you know jesus isn't mentioned here and if it's not mentioned by the prophets or by god I don't know what to tell y'all. You want to? Deuteronomy 13. Um, you might have to say it a little loud with. Deuteronomy 13 and 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you. To know whether you love the Lord or God with all your heart. One second, Wiz. That's a test. He's saying the Lord proveth you. He's trying to see if you're going to chase after this fool's gold. We've done it repeatedly as Israelites. When Moses left, they built the calf, right? They're going to worship God that way. Uh, Saul, he's going to bring back stuff from, from his raiding party, from the war. And what happened? You know what I'm saying? For not listening to God. Good, Wiz. I'm sorry. God prove you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Not Jesus. And that prophet or dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. Jesus. Because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Not and Jesus. redeemed you out of not Jesus. So, whoa, 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 whoa. What did it say? Hold it. One more time. What's it say? And redeemed you. So, so it just said God redeemed us. Yep. What's, what's the name Jesus mean? The redeemer, he who redeems. So if you read, the context is there, but you have to have comprehension. People say the context is right there. It'll explain itself. I'm sorry, Will. And redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. So That's it. You, and and if a little bit further down, maybe like two verses down, he's going to tell you, don't show this dude no grace, no nothing. Put him to death. Let your hand be first and the people next. This is Deuteronomy. What is that? 13, Wiz? 13. You can read it for yourself. Yeah, you, 
thir- 13, uh, 1 down to... It's the thing about God. 1 down to like 10. You can read it for yourself. What, what Jesus was, was something that got made up. If you end in the, the old the Tanakh, Torah, Malachi, see how it ends. See if it looks like it's telling you about a Jesus. How does it just pick up in the New Testament? Jesus isn't spoken about at all. And then in Matthew 2 and 23, it lies. It will lie. Let me read that. Oh, you want to read that, Wiz? Matthew 2, 2 and 23. That's my son. Y'all know Wiz. Matthew 2 and 23. We're going to give you a couple things to let you know this Christianity is fake. Yes, good, Wiz. Matthew 2 and 23. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called the Nazarene. When, when did a prophet speak that? I'm in Tanakh, Torah. No prophet spoke about him being from Nazareth. You know, um, the only thing they're talking about in Nazareth is the kingship of David, Bethlehem, right? Because all kings have to come from there. The kings of Egypt came from Bethlehem. That's, this is knowing the book, knowing the scriptures. You know, uh, Nazareth, Galilee, like all of these things. You have a whole bunch of different different genealogies of Jesus with the scripture. Matthew going to tell you one thing. Mark will say something else. Luke will say a whole other thing. That's not God-like. It's no discrepancy with God. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not murder. You know, you see a prophecy in the scriptures. It gets handled within the time that they tell you. Everything got done. Um, what are we talking about? Um, what's what's the, the shit that people always get jacked up? Uh, Isaiah 53 what are you talking about? How he's going to be scorned, bruised, and bad for the iniquity of earth mm-hmm. or the rest of the people. They're talking about us, the children, of the, the children of the promise, right? See, it's so slick with you if you use your brain. First, they tell you that the Jews refuse Jesus, right? They tell you that they refuse him. Now, we waiting for a king. We being beat the fuck up. The equivalent of blacks in America. And they say, yo, y'all about to get a king. He going to save y'all. They're going to send you Nat Turner. He's going to be about that. Same way they did with David, right? David came and delivered us. So this king is coming. And then he get here. And people had questions because if he was predicted about, why didn't anybody know who he was? We still getting bruised today, too. Like, we're still being beaten up for the sins of the world. Like It's still, still happening. Yeah, people still, uh, we still suffering for eating shrimp, for things of that nature. For, um, it's still happening. For adultery, yeah, like it's, it hasn't stopped. It's and and you might not be doing it straight way, but if you're not speaking out against it, God can charge you. Like when when the water come, your house not gonna be the one that not get wet, right? We had this in Egypt. We put the mark of God on our house to let us know we was with Him. Now the mark of God on your house is keeping His law, statutes, and commandments. So when that water come. Just because you're not the intended target, you're going to be the collateral damage of it because you don't keep God's laws. You eat shrimp now, when that water come through to wipe out the murderer, he's going to take you too, right? Because you're there, collateral damage. This is how the law of God works. Um, we don't keep it. It's easier to say Jesus, 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 Jesus. But as we see, Jesus is not even mentioned in the Bible, and that's the problem with our people. It's no effort. Um... They say what kind of shit? Nobody can keep the laws of God? Yeah. We say, do you even know where they are to keep them? And then when you find them, which one of them is too hard? Yeah, and for you to even see that, like, that you can't not eat shrimp or not eat pork, like, that that speaks about your character. And I know yeah. people, usually people are saying it from ignorance and not knowing the law, but that speaks of that echoes yeah. your character as well. Once you know it and then tell somebody, oh, I can't do that. I'm like, dog, we grown people. What can't you, you can't not go out and get shrimp and you can't not put them in your mouth and eat them. We grown ass people. What if your child told you some of this shit? Daddy, I can't not piss in my pants. I got to do it in my pants, daddy. You piss penis right there. He could take his little penis right in there and pee. Same way with your shrimp. With everything. Homosexuality. You got the, the urge to do it with a man. Don't do it with a man. Incredible, right? But you're going to give your reason, yourself a reason to do it. That's not overcoming. That's not fighting for God. That's not being convicted that what God wants is better. That's not thinking that if I do this, God going to bless me in another way. 
because you don't believe in God. You won't persevere. When it feel against what you want, that's when you turn back to what make your flesh feel good. That's not how God forged you. You got to stand up to that shit. You'll get delivered, and it's uncomfortable with, like, anything. Coca-Cola soda if you stop drinking that shit. You know what I'm saying? That's That ain't shit. But it's a struggle, and it's worth it. And this is where you know who's serious about God. This is where your prayer come in. It's staying close to him daily, right? To keep your mind refreshed, because you can wander off in a minute. And you have to change your thoughts with some words. You can't just sit there, contemplate, contemplate, contemplate. Say some stuff. Get the Bible, read it out. Say some words out, outright, right? You have to change your mind with stuff. And the biggest thing that you're going to have to do is flush yourself. Just think that nobody means you well. Take it from that point. Even me, I don't mean you well right now. So everything I'm telling you, go and investigate it. Everybody is your enemy but God. Play it that way. Play it that way and then get, get to who you need in your life based on God. He told you he would separate you from your enemies. And he can't separate you from people if you're acting like people. His law, statutes, and commandments, everybody can't do that. Everybody not interested in it. So you'll get your peace by that. And the perfect part, let me let me clear this up for people too, because they this is always something with folks. And it's the easiest thing in the world. God wants you to be perfect. Or free from blemish. So when you get a blemish on you, free yourself up of it. And if you felt the way about getting that blemish, like if you was really about it, as soon as you got it or went out of line with what God wanted you to do, you feel the way yourself because the Holy Spirit of the conviction was on you. See this? This could get a blemish on you. Black mark, blue mark, or whatever. And I could say, fuck it, everybody get blemishes and run on about my life. And God told me, not to have blemishes. Well, since I put the blemish on there, it's impossible for me to get it off. And God is an asshole. He won't even care if I say, you know what? I messed up, Dad. Let me get this off here and help me not to get mess it up again. You know, repent. Ask him to help my walk not to get a blemish on there no more. What you think he would say about that? Think he would forgive me? Give me another chance to get it right? After I just confess? Y'all ain't see me put the mark on it. I know it was on there. And I did that when it's just me and him. You think he's going to forgive me? Yes, he will. That's what he said. Um, Solomon dedicated the temple to the Lord, the first temple. And he made supplication for, for us when we were out of the land. I don't think people really understand this part about God, Israel, and the children of Israel. See, we had priests to make atonements for us when we were in the land because they were the only ones that could deal with the holy instruments. You know, bloodshed. They had special instructions. Read Leviticus. Read Ezekiel. It'll tell you all about it. And the rest of us, we just made it. We we did what you call, well, not. We got forgiveness. You know, when we were out of the land, Solomon dedicated the temple to people there. And when we were pulled out of the land, because we all going to sin. And it's instructions on how to get a, not atonement, but forgiveness when we out of the land. Has nothing to do with Jesus even. Nothing at all. Um, Daniel was in captivity. Nothing to do with Jesus. He prayed. I think Daniel prayed five times a day towards the east where Jerusalem is. And that's atonement. Turn back to me and I'll turn back to you. That's pretty much it. But now, y'all can have your own decisions to make about this Jesus thing. And it shouldn't be based on whether you're emotional or not, whether you like me or not. That don't matter. Just check the information out, you know. And from the rip, it's been man attempt to play God. That's where we sit at right now. That's where everything is. That's not how God created us. We're not supposed to have masters. We're not supposed to be masters. He gave us every resource we need here for food, drink, wellness. Everything is here. Man, certain man decided to play God. Round up all the resources. Gave us fake pharmaceuticals, medicine, poison for what we already had, put sanctions on what we could use, charged us for stuff that God gave us, and here we are today, trying to live amongst us. Not that long ago, we got a glimpse of the North Sentinel Island people. That's God giving us a message. They've been around all this time with half the shit we have, surviving tsunamis, 60,000 years. 
if a tsunami hit New York City, what you think gonna happen? And we call them primitive, right? It's all about God. They don't have any government, any masters, any of that. But they've been here for 65,000 years.